I remember at my home church growing up, many times during the invitation, uh, the song leader would get up and we would sing an old hymn. The words went like this. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. The second verse says, Would you walk with the Lord in the light of His Word and have peace and contentment always? You must do His sweet will to be free from all ill. On the altar your all must be laid. The third verse says, Oh, we never can know what the Lord will bestow of the blessings for which we have prayed until our body and soul He doth fully control and our all on the altar is laid. The Course says, Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the Spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield to Him your body and soul. I want to invite you this morning to turn with me to Genesis chapter number 22. Genesis chapter number 22. And I want to preach to you this morning on this thought. Is your all on the altar? Is your all on the altar? Let's look together in Genesis chapter number 22. And we'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God, will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, 
Blessings I will bless, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Is your all on the altar? When we speak of an altar in the Bible, altars in the Old Testament referred to a place of a sacrifice where an innocent animal was slain, where an innocent animal shed its blood, where an innocent animal died in the place of an individual as an act of worship to God. The altar was a place of sacrifice. The altars in the Old Testament were also a place of worship. It was at these altars that these patriarchs built and then later the priest would go to in the temple. It was at these altars where the people was able to worship God, approach His presence, meet with Him and He with them. Here in our text we've read this morning, the verse number 1 opens up by telling us that God tested Abraham. Now the word test here in this passage speaks of a pressure-filled circumstance. It speaks of a time when God refines us to purify our faith, to bring us to a point where we're more committed to God. Also, a test is a time that God uses not only to refine our faith, but to reveal our faith. You see, it's through the times of testing that the Lord brings us through that we're brought to the place to see whether or not if we're truly committed to God. Now here in the text that we have read this morning, we find that Abraham is experiencing another test. You know in the Bible when you read about Abraham, we're introduced to him in chapter 11 of Genesis. We find Abraham was a man of faith. He lived by faith. He believed God, he trusted God, and he believed God, and God counted that as righteousness. He followed God, he lived for God, but even though he lived for God and followed God, he still went through many times of testing. You know, in chapter 12, Abraham went through the family test. God said to Abraham, I want you to leave your family and your country and I want you to follow me unto a land that I will show you and there I'll make of you a great nation. I've got a plan for your life, but you first got to leave your family. And the Bible says Abraham did. A little later in chapter 12, Abraham experienced the famine test. He experienced a famine in the land and he failed that test instead of trusting God to take care of him, trusting the God who was guiding him to provide for him. He chose to go in his own direction down into Egypt. Thankfully, Abraham got back on track. In the next chapters, Abraham experienced a fellowship test. You see, when he left his home land, his nephew Lot and his family went with him as well. And finally, after their herds continued to grow, there was not enough pasture land there to tend to the animals. So the two men, the two family members had to part ways. And Abraham passed that test because instead of hurting his son, his nephew Lot, or taking advantage of him. He let him pick the land he wanted to go to first. Abraham also experienced a fight test. A little bit later, he found out how that Lot had been captured by some neighboring kings and communities. And so Abraham and his servants, they rise up and they trust God to give them a victory and to deliver the nephew Lot. Then those kings of Sodom wanted to reward Abraham for what he had done. And so he was up against a fortune test. 
Abraham said, I can't accept the gold that you've given me. God's the one that's given me the victory. I don't want to accept your gold because you may say that you made me rich instead of God was the one who took care of me. And then we get to this passage that we're looking at this morning and Abraham is up against another test. It's the greatest test that he ever went through. It was a test that both refined his faith and both revealed his faith. It was at this test that God brought Abraham to bring him to a place of complete and full surrender. I want to bring you a message this morning from this passage on Abraham concerning his test of full surrender. And I want to share with you this morning some areas which God desires from you and from me to fully surrender to Him. First of all this morning, I notice from this text that God desires from us complete obedience. Complete obedience. Now if you look here in verse number 1, the Bible says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to Abraham, And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountains of which I shall tell you. Here the Lord is asking Abraham to do something greater than anything he's asked of him before. As I think about Abraham here and the Lord bringing him to the place of complete obedience, it's clear that Abraham was close enough to hear God speak. I want to ask you this morning, are you close enough to the Lord to hear Him speak? Are you close enough to hear that still, small voice? Are you close enough to hear Him say no and to say yes? Are you close enough to Him to hear Him ask you to do certain things for Him to honor Him? You see, if we're to be an individual that offers complete obedience to God, we must be close enough to hear Him when He speaks. And then we must be open enough to respond when he speaks. Notice the Lord said, Abraham. And Abraham heard the Lord speak. And immediately he said back to the Lord, Here I am. Lord, I'm your servant. I'm following you. I'm at your dispense. I'm at your beckoning call. I'm here to receive any kind of command from you. I want to obey you. Abraham is yielding complete obedience to God. You know, as I think about that, I read a story about a missionary by the name of Adoniram Judson. Adoniram Judson graduated from college and seminary, and immediately he received a call to a large and fashionable church in his hometown, Boston. His mother and his sister, they all rejoiced Because they said, you can live at home and and fulfill your calling. But within the heart of Judson, he sensed a call from God to leave America, to leave Boston, and the journey around the world to minister to the people in Burma. His family was disturbed But he said to them, if I stay here to serve God in His ministry, I would only be given the Lord partial obedience. And I could not be happy in that. And so finally, after a period of struggling, Judson set out to fully, completely obey God, and he went to Burma. And the story goes that through his ministry there, over 50,000 people were saved because he completely obeyed God. I want to ask you this morning, are you completely obeying God? Just like Adoniram, who possibly had personal plans, Abraham had plans. Abraham had been waiting for this son. Abraham had been longing for this son. Abraham had been looking for God to make of him a great nation. And now God says, Abraham, I want you to give me your son. God's saying, I want complete 
obedience. I want to ask you this morning, are you willing to obey God completely? Are you willing to obey Him when He speaks to your heart? Or is your heart open enough to hear Him speak? Are you close enough to hear Him? Are you willing and open to say, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever? You know, I've heard it said before that the Lord's not going to reveal His will to one of His children until they're willing to hear and obey what He has to say. All this morning, may we get to a point like Abraham and say, God, I'm open, I'm willing, I'm ready to do whatever you want for my life. I'm willing to offer on the altar this morning complete obedience in any area of my life. Number two this morning, I see God wants us to offer another area of our life, not only complete obedience, But I see from this text that he wants us to offer to him complete love. Complete love. Look at verse 2 again. Notice this. The Lord is speaking to Abraham and he says, Take now your only son, your only son Isaac, whom you love. Oh, I can just see Abraham. You remember he was an older man when the Lord called him to start following him. Then it was quite a few years later before Abraham and Sarah had little Isaac. No doubt he was the pride and joy. He was the apple of Abraham's eye. No doubt he looked at this little boy and thought, Hey, this is the promised son. This is the one that God is going to bring forth and be a blessing to many nations. This is the one that God is going to prosper. This is the promised Child, Abraham had many goals and plans. He loved that son. It was special to him. But one day God moved upon Abraham's heart and touched his heart and said, Abraham, I want you fully. And since I want you fully, that means I'm going to have to also have that that is most near to your heart. What was the nearest to his heart? His son. God is saying to you and I this morning, I want you to give me your unhindered love. You see, God doesn't want anything to come in between us and God. He doesn't want anything to rival our relationship with God. He wants complete love, a love that's fully given over to Him. When we get up in the morning loving Him with all of our heart, loving Him with all of our soul, loving Him with all of our mind and body and strength, with all of our being loving and worshiping and living in adoration to Him each and every day. He wants us to give Him our unhindered love. He wants us to give Him our costly love. Did you notice this in the text? God didn't say, Abraham, I want the choicest of your flocks. God didn't say to Abraham, I want you to give me a large portion of your gold and silver. You see, none of that captivated the heart of Abraham. What captivated his heart, that thing that was most precious to him, that which was most dear to him was his son. And God said from Abraham, I want you to give to me that which is nearest unto you. I want your son, your only son. Now he had another son, Ishmael. But by saying only son, the Lord was saying the promised son. I want that which is special to you. You know, folks, God doesn't want our leftovers. God doesn't want our... Uh, uh, what we've got when everybody else has got their part and we've got our part. No, God wants our all. He wants our whole heart. He wants that which even may be costly from us at times. You see, total surrender, obedience, commitment to God is always linked to our love for Him. Let me explain that to you. Remember over in John chapter 21... What is the story there? Jesus has been raised from the dead. Now in the process of being crucified and and raised from the dead, Simon Peter, that beloved disciple, denied the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus shows up to Simon Peter 
and says to him three times, Peter, do you love me? Simon Peter, do you love me? You see, Simon Peter had denied the Lord. Simon Peter had withheld his pride. He had withheld his his, uh, reputation with that lady that confronted him. And he was broken over the fact that his love for Jesus was divided. And now Jesus comes back to him again and gives him an opportunity to recommit and repledge his love to the Lord. I love how that Simon Peter denied the Lord three times and Jesus came back and gave him three responses three times to rededicate his love back to Jesus. You see, folks, God is looking for complete love. Complete love. When I think about that, I want you to hold your place there and look at what Jesus says in Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. In Luke chapter number 14, beginning at verse number 25. Luke 14, beginning at verse 25. The Bible says, Now great multitudes went with him. That's speaking of Jesus. And he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother... Wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Notice there what Jesus said. Jesus is saying if we're truly to be one of his followers, if we're truly to come after him, if we're truly to be one of his servants, then we must be willing to give our love fully to him. Now you may think, well, does Jesus really mean that we are to hate our mom, hate our dad, hate our brothers and sisters and our families? No, Jesus is speaking figuratively. He's speaking with exaggeration. He's trying to prove to us and explain to us that He wants our love to be so strong for Him that our love for anyone else, even our own self, looks like hate compared to our love for Him. Jesus wants complete love. Would we put our all on the altar and give our love to Him? Give our love to Him. And then number three this morning... The Lord wants another area from our life. Complete love, complete obedience. But number three, complete trust. Complete trust. Now look with me back in our text again. And look at verse number five. The Bible says, And Abraham said to the young men, Stay here with the donkey and the lad, and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Now that absolutely shows confidence and trust in God on the part of Abraham. You say, why? Because God said, go to this mountain, slay your son, offer him as a burnt offering to God. But you see, Abraham looked beyond that situation and looked back to a promise that God made to him. And God said, through that son, I'm going to make of you a great nation. Through that son, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And Abraham, he maybe didn't understand God. He maybe didn't know all the plans and details that God had in mind. But Abraham so trusted God to the point where he said, God, I know you want me to give you my son. You have gave me this son. He's the promised son. You've asked me now to sacrifice him on the altar, but God, I'm going to trust you that you've got a plan that even if I slay this son in obedience to you, you'll raise him back up. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 19, the Bible clearly tells us that Abraham believed that. Abraham had that kind of confidence in God. Abraham trusted that God would not fail. And folks, I want to tell you in life, In giving your all to God, He wants you not only to give Him your love and your obedience, but He wants you to give all your worries, all of your anxieties, any kind of strength within yourself to make it on your own. He wants you to offer your all to Him completely, trust, and put your confidence 
in him, trusting that he will honor his word. Look at verse number 8. We see how that Isaac has just asked his dad in verse 7, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And in verse 8, the Bible says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Abraham still is trusting God. He doesn't know what to expect, but he knows the promises of God and he's willing to hang his life. He's willing to hang his son's future. He's willing to hang his all in all on the promises of God. You know, you and I as believers, we can't live by reading the circumstances. We can't live by trying to figure things out. We must live by the promises of God. And it's on the promises of God that we can depend. Abraham saying, God, I believe you're going to meet my need. I don't understand. It's beyond my reasoning. It's beyond any experience I've had before. But God, I'm going to have complete confidence in you. I read how over in the Middle East, Arabian horses are trained in an unusual way. Those horses are trained to fully obey their master. And their confidence in their master is tested by their master depriving them of water for a long period of time and then allowing the horse to get close to some much needed water and right before the horse gets ready to drink the master blows a whistle or sounds out a call and when the horse leaves that water that he's wanting and comes back to the master the master then gives the horse all that it needs and wants the master is trying to teach that horse that it is to absolutely trust its master. It's to trust fully the one who owns it and is, is taking care of it. You see, in like manner, the Lord is saying, I want you to trust me in the difficult times. I want you to trust me in the good times. And like Abraham, I want you to trust me even if I bring you to an edge of a cliff where it seems like there's no further way to go. Even if I bring you to a point where it seems as if I'm surrounded and there's no way around, God says, I want you to trust me completely. God provides. Abraham says, I'm going to trust him. I don't know how, but I'm going to trust him. And then finally, God wants one more area from our life. Complete trust, complete love, complete obedience, but lastly, complete yieldedness. Complete yieldedness. Now look with me here in our text. Abraham has came to the place in verse 9. He's built the altar. He's laid the wood on the altar. He's bound Isaac there on the altar. Abraham then takes the knife and he stretches his arm out with the knife ready to come down to slay his son. And at the very moment that he takes his knife and stretches his arm out, he hears the angel of the Lord speak, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham in verse 11 says, Here am I. And in verse 12, the angel of the Lord says, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. God is saying, Abraham, I see. I've tested your faith. I've brought you to the end of yourself. I've brought you to your wit's end. I've asked for your complete obedience, your complete love, your complete trust, your complete uh, yieldedness, and you've offered that fully. You've not withheld anything from the Lord. And at that moment, verse 13 says, that Abraham lifted his eyes and looked up, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. You know what that tells me? Abraham didn't understand what God was about to do, but as Abraham and Isaac was going up one side of the mountain, God had a ram coming up on the other side of the mountain. 
Abraham couldn't see beyond that moment, but God saw the whole thing. God was orchestrating the situation. God was going to take care of Abraham. God was going to fulfill his promises. God was not going to let his servant down. Oh, yes, God may bring us to some tests. God may put us through some trying times and allow us to go through some tough experiences. But remember, God has a purpose. God has a plan. He's bringing us to a place where we'll be willing to completely yield ourself to his control God says I don't want you to withhold anything from me and I see that you didn't withhold your only son the Bible talks how Abraham went and grabbed the ram and he slew the ram and he offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son that's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ how that he was offered on the cross in our place on our behalf he died in our stead and the offering was given to the Lord. In verse 14, the Bible says, And Abraham called the name of the place, The Lord will provide Jehovah Jireh, as it's said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Verse 16, The angel of the Lord is speaking and he says to Abraham, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Verse 18, in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Complete yieldingness to God means holding nothing back. Holding nothing back. I want to ask you something this morning. Is there something in your life that you're holding out? You're holding back? You're yielded to the Lord 90%. Yes, you're a believer. Yes, you want to follow Jesus. But there's a little something in your heart that you're holding back. There's a little something in your life that the Holy Spirit of God has touched and brought to your attention many, many times that you need to surrender that to the Lord. You need to yield that area to the Lord. You need to say, yes, Lord, yes, I give you my heart. I give you my life fully. I give you this area that's in my life. I yield it all to you. I, my arms are wide open. My heart is open. I'm holding nothing back. I wonder this morning, would this be the day that you need to make a commitment to the Lord and say, Lord, I am fully yielding every area of my life to you. I want to be given to you. I want to be used by you. I want to hear you speak. I want to give you all my love. I don't want to hold anything back from you. Complete yieldedness means holding nothing back from God. Complete yieldedness means offering yourself for his use. Since Abraham did what God asked, God said, Abraham, I'm going to take this son and in your seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Abraham, I'm going to bless you and then I'm going to use you to be a blessing to other people. You see, it's only when the clay gets in the potter's hand that the clay can be molded into a useful instrument. Now, as long as the clay is in the river bank, it can never be used to hold coffee. It can never be used to hold a beautiful flower. It can never be used as a bowl to eat from. It can never be used as a piece of decoration in your home. It's only when the clay is taken out of the bank and then molded in the hands of the potter, fully yielded to the potter, that it is brought to a point where it can be fully used in all of its glory. May we this morning fully yield ourselves to the Lord, hold nothing back. Abraham did that. His all was on the altar. That's what God was asking for from him. God desires your complete love. He desires your complete obedience. He desires your complete trust. He desires your complete yieldedness. I wonder this morning, would there be one here today and you need to trust Christ as your Savior? I want to give you an opportunity to come and I'd love to pray with you. If that's what God's speaking to your heart, you come and sit down up here and I'll pray with you. Would there be some Christian here today, Jesus is your Savior. 
you want to follow him you want to serve him you want him to use you and bless you and bless others through you the only way that God can fully use you and bless others through you is when you fully give yourself yielded every aspect to the Lord don't withhold anything this morning as we stand to our feet if God's speaking to some heart I want to invite you to come would there be a dad that would want to come and say God I want to fully yield myself to you a mom I want to fully yield myself to you would there be a teenager that would come and say Lord I want to fully give myself to you I want to fully give myself for whatever it is that you want to do with my life I don't want to hold anything back I want to be completely open and yielded to you. Oh, dear sir, dear ma'am, whoever you may be, open your heart and say, God, I want to lay it all on the altar for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. Thank you for those who've come here to listen to your word today, those listening online. God, I pray that you would move in our hearts. God, I pray that we would be fully yielded to you, letting you have our lives fully surrendered in every way. God, do a work in the hearts of your people. God, I pray that you'd lead each one of us members of this church to a place of complete yieldedness and love and trust and obedience to you. Speak to your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing a verse or two.